Let's go ahead and get Houdini set up with GoZ. So go ahead and double click Houdini and launch that executable. Go ahead and go to File, Import, Houdini Digital Asset. Go ahead and navigate. And of course this GoZ installer.hda will be available in the description. So go ahead and double click that. Choose Install and Create. And hit OK. And let's go ahead and restart Houdini. Discard and quit and just relaunch Houdini. Now in order to see the GoZ shelf, go up here to this plus sign right here, go to Shelves and click GoZ. That'll open up the GoZ shelf right here, it'll be available to you, and you'll see a Start GoZ in there. If you click that, that'll go ahead and open a GoZ portal, and now Houdini is open to accepting files from ZBrush. Now we're going to go ahead and get ZBrush set up, so if I click on ZBrush here, you can load up any of these projects right here if you want to. If you don't have Lightbox open, just feel free to grab a you know, we'll say a polysphere, drag it out on your canvas, go into edit mode, and then click make poly mesh 3D, and GoZ will be available to you. If you haven't done anything with GoZ yet, you'll be able to hit GoZ, and we'll go ahead and walk you through the GoZ process of setting up your application. If you already have GoZ set up, you can go into preferences, GoZ, and we can just like update the path to Houdini, for instance, go ahead and click that and choose what we're going to be using is uh, the Houdini 16.0.633 build. So now when I hit Go Z, it's going to send the sphere over to Houdini. So if I hop back over to Houdini, Houdini here, you're going to see the sphere. If I go back into ZBrush, and let's say we want to, let's change our matte cap to gray. So you can see it a little bit better. Let's hit the X to toggle on transform, activate symmetry in the X here. And we'll go ahead and just do some quick, we'll use our clay buildup brush or our clay tubes brush to just make some changes to this geometry. Go ahead and hit Go Z, and we'll hop over to Houdini, and it'll go ahead and update for you. So... Now you can go from ZBrush to Houdini and back again, and you have all the functionality of Houdini available to you with your ZBrush assets. So now that we have GoZ installed for Houdini, let's go ahead and have a little bit more fun. I'm going to go back into ZBrush here. And if you don't have Lightbox open right now, just hit the comma key. That'll go ahead and open it for you, or hit click the Lightbox button. Go into the Tools section here. Double-click the Dog Z tool. Go ahead and hide Lightbox. Drag the dog out on your canvas. Go into edit mode. And now when we hit Go Z and head back into Houdini here, that'll go ahead and load the dog into our Houdini scene using Go Z. So you're going to see we now have a Go Z dog node in here. Let's go ahead and select the dog here. And if we want to move the dog, we're going to go ahead and select the handles here. Let's move him up and we'll go ahead and rotate him around a little bit. So he's above this XZ plane here. Let's go ahead and make this dog into a rigid body. So with the dog selected, go ahead and click the rigid body section up here and choose RBD objects. So now that our dog is a rigid body, we need to go ahead and make him collide with something. Let's go ahead and make a quick ground plane. So go into collisions here, click the ground plane, and that'll go ahead and give us an infinite ground plane for our dog to fall onto. Uh, if we don't want to necessarily see the ground plane, what we can do is go ahead and turn off the grid, and under this ground plane node here, click the little blue bar, and that'll toggle visibility off. Next, let's go ahead and enable real-time playback. So go ahead and click this icon down here. And now when we hit the play key here, it's going to drop the dog onto the floor and he's going to bounce around. So let's go ahead and shatter this dog. So let's go ahead and hit stop, rewind, go ahead and select our dog here, go back into rigid bodies, and we'll just do make breakable. It's going to tell you at the bottom here to go ahead and press enter to complete this operation. Because we already have our dog selected, that'll go ahead and make our dog breakable. Let's go back up into object level here, so just by clicking that there. And we go ahead and click off our dog and go into selection mode here. So now when we hit play, it's going to drop the dog on the floor and then the dog's going to shatter. Now, if we, of course, we want to make this dog shatter into more pieces, there's a couple options we can play with. Let's go ahead and stop, rewind, double click on the auto dop network, and let's change our maximum fractures from one to two. You can also play with the impact radius if you want. So you can go ahead and just middle mouse click on the impact radius. You can dial this up or down. I'll just go ahead and keep that at 0.5 for now. And we'll go back up into our object mode here. And now when we hit play, past the initial impact, it's going to break into more pieces. So if we like what we see here, we can go ahead and hit stop. And let's talk about how to get this back into ZBrush. The first thing we're going to do is double click on the Go Z dog node here. And if we were just passing this back and forth sculpting, we wouldn't have to do anything special. We could just drop a Go Z node in here. But first what we're going to do is hit the tab key and start typing unpack. What that's going to do is allow us to put an unpack node in here. Just go ahead and drop that and then connect these two nodes here. What Unpack is going to do is get rid of any extraneous information from the shatter and allow us to just export the geometry back to ZBrush. Now, in order to get it back into ZBrush, of course, we're going to hit Tab, start typing in Go Z, and now we have our new Go Z export node. Go ahead and click that, bring that to the bottom, and go ahead and attach those two nodes together. Select your Go Z node export, and if you want to rename this before you send it back into ZBrush, just double click over here. And we'll call that Shatter Dog. So with Shatter Dog selected, Go ahead and hit send to ZBrush. And that'll go ahead and load this tool right up into ZBrush for us. Now, these are just polygons. 
So if I click polyframe on in here, you can see we already have uh, polygons in here. You can use your move brush and just treat these as any sort of regular polygon object that you would within ZBrush. For example, we can go over to polygroups. And if we want to make each one of these chunks its own polygroup, go ahead and hit auto groups. Now you're going to see it doesn't look like it's welded in here, which is an easy fix within ZBrush. All you got it, and it's also an easy fix within Houdini. But since we're already in ZBrush, let's go ahead and go to geometry here. And we'll go ahead and go to modify topology. Let's click this weld points here. And now when we go to auto groups here, to go ahead and make these each one individual chunk. So at this point, you can go back into your subtool menu here and you can go to split, group split, and split these all into separate subtools if you want. Or if you just want to manipulate these one at a time with your move brush or your sculpting brush, let's go ahead and make our tap S, make our brush size a little bit bigger here. We're going to go into our move brush here and under auto masking, just change mask by polygroups up to 100. Now when removing these things around, it'll go ahead and just move these individually.